is Mike Callahan, Dr. FileFinder, and welcome back to our special Butterscotch.com 10-part series on understanding your router. Now in this segment, we're going to look at implementing the WPA2 protocol. WPA stands for Wi-Fi Protected Access. In your router settings, under Wireless and Wireless Security, you should find a drop-down list with security modes that are available in your router. Now we'll click this. You see I have WPA Personal, WPA Enterprise, WPA2 Personal and Enterprise. If at all possible, if it's available in your router, pick WPA2 Personal. Now you can see that under WPA2 Personal, you have WPA al algorithms. You're offered AES and TKIP plus AES. If in your home network you have devices that support both WPA and WPA2, then you'll want to select the TKIP plus AES. If you have all WPA2 devices, then you can just pick AES. Then you want to have a shared key. And this is something that you'll type in, and it has to be typed in from every computer on your network when they want to access the network the first time. After that, they can have their computer remember it. So pick a shared key that you can remember. This one is 12 characters in length. It can be from 8 to 63 characters long. Just keep in mind that you're going to have to remember it. In a home setting, what you can do is go around to each computer or device that's going to access the network and put in the WPA shared key while well, it's all fresh in your mind. I also suggest storing it in a database or writing it on a piece of paper and putting that away so you can remember. When you're done setting that up, click Save Settings and your network will be solid. Keep in mind though that each computer on the network outside of the ones that are connected to the router will have to enter this shared key in order to access the network. This is one segment of a 10-part series on understanding your router. Make sure you look at all the other segments.